What's up guys, Tech Lab here, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of our most favourite components, the APU. Now when we recently had the opportunity to pick one of these up for our bench and rig, of course we had to jump at it because having something with an integrated graphics on a benching test system is really important to us because it helps us diagnose problems. But of course, like everything around here, we need to see how well we can game on it. Now we all know that AMD are the kings when it comes to integrated graphics. Unlike Intel, AMD have actually seemed to have put a lot of effort in getting their graphics pretty sweet on these, particularly when you come to the Ryzen APUs. This is where AMD really stepped up the game and produced something that can not only produce great graphics on the screen, but also when it comes to gaming. This one that we picked up is one of AMD's latest, and I say latest because obviously it's a 5000 series and AMD have recently released their 7000 series, but they haven't actually released any APUs yet. So if you're going out there to buy a latest APU, this is probably one you're going to pick up. Now this is the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G, and unlike its predecessors that only had 4 cores and 8 threads, this one actually has 6 cores and 12 threads, which actually make it a pretty strong CPU all on its own. It does fit in the AM4 socket, which is great for those wanting to upgrade because with a simple BIOS update, you can get this running in a pre-existing system. And if you want to know how to do that, we recently did a video on it and we'll link it at the end. Now we've had this running in our benching system for over a week now, and it's actually performed really, really well. When you pair it with a graphics card, it's a pretty strong CPU. And when you test it without, you can actually get some great results. Let's take a look at some of the benchmarks we did, and then we'll talk about the results we got. So as we can see from those results, we were actually pretty impressed. The games that we benchmarked were actually a combination of new and old titles, and for every single one of them in 1080p high, we managed to get over 30 frames per second. That is going to give you more of a console experience, but if you actually look at some of the older titles, you can get something around the 60 frames per second performance, which is fantastic for something that doesn't have a discrete graphics card. 
We've tested many graphics cards on this channel, particularly older ones that can barely keep up with this CPU, so it's going to make a good choice for anybody that wants a bit of light gaming, particularly if you're playing older games. When it came to some of the more newer demanding titles, unfortunately it fell flat on its face. We did have an attempt at benchmarking Horizon Zero Dawn, but no matter what settings we used, it actually performed really badly, so we wouldn't recommend it for anything like that. In high settings, we were getting an average of around 10 frames per second, but because of the 1% lows, it was unplayable all the way through. Lowering the settings a little bit, it didn't seem to make much of a difference. We did manage to increase the average FPS to around 15, but still, that's not enough to actually play this game at any kind of decent experience. But this is where the APU comes into itself. Because of it being such a strong CPU as well, if you were to pair it with even a mid-range graphics card, you're going to be able to increase the performance greatly. And this CPU will pair nicely with anything that is pretty much mid-range. Where we found this APU was really useful was in games such as Counter-Strike GO. Now you're not going to get a fully competitive experience, but for those of you who just like to play it for the fun of it, you're going to get a great performance out of it. While testing Counter-Strike GO in 1080p high, we managed to reach over 60 frames per second on average, with slight dips now and again, but the game was more than playable. So all round, we're actually pretty impressed with the AMD Ryzen 5600G. I'm actually looking forward to getting its bigger brother, the AMD Ryzen 7 5700G, because they're supposed to be quite a bit quicker than these, particularly when it comes to gaming. And I'm sure that's going to be soon because the prices of these are dropping rapidly as we speak. The more 7000 series get released, these are just going to continue to drop in price. And because they're still such strong CPUs, they're going to be really good for a long time. But I want to know what you think. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the AMD Ryzen APUs. Do you have a 5600G? And if so, what are you playing? If you don't have one, would you consider using one to play games? We find them extremely useful, particularly because we like to build tiny little builds, and that's what they're perfect for. And as long as we get a near console-like experience, even if it's the older generation of console, we're actually pretty happy with it. And that's our look at the AMD Ryzen 5600G. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this, and also drop the video a like so that we know to do more, and we'll catch you in the next one.